We're here to answer your game, gaming, and game night questions, working with you to make your game nights better. Tonight's question comes from Amon Jerome Lamy, who reached out on Facebook looking for some help. They wrote, I'm obsessed with co-op games. I own Zombicide Black Plague and its expansions, and also Pandemic and the Cure expansion. I'm looking at getting some new ones for us to try. My brother has agree agreed to buy Arkham Horror the card game for us, but I want to get something myself. I'm looking into 11 different games and wondering <laughs> if you have played them all and if you could rank them for me. They then provide a list of 11 games, which we'll get to in a bit. So first off, thanks for the great question, Amon. Now, when I saw this, I was immediately struck by the fact that we have talked about cooperative games quite a bit. But every single time we've talked about them, it's been kids games. So we have an entire show on cooperative kids games. Link will be in the show notes. And we have another one that's like great cooperative kids games that adults will find fun, which, yes, that's two different lists. There is some overlap. But we've never actually talked about the cooperative games we like. Now, yes, some of these have come up on other game recommendation lists, but we've never had a cooperative adult game list. I don't want to say adult, a hobby game list, whatever. We've never shared our own personal uh, favorite cooperative games. So what I'm going to do tonight is we are going to answer Amon's questions. I'm going to I'm going to rank the the 11 games they listed. But I want to then expand this to be a talk about our favorite cooperative games out of all the ones we played. Well, before that, though, let's give Amon what they asked for. Here is his list list of 11 games in our order of preference. Now, I will say I have not played all 11. So the bottom three games I haven't had the pleasure of playing, so I can't rank them. So the three at the bottom of the list, only because I haven't played them, are Too Many Bones, Besieged, and Spirit Island. Now, of the three, based on the research I've done, podcasts I've, wa I've listened to, videos I've watched, the one that looks the best of those three would be Spirit Island. And I have a feeling if I own Spirit Island, it would have been on our list tonight. And uh, we're not going to rank our list later, but I think it would have been pretty high up had I ranked it. Next would be Too Many Bones which looks fascinating. We stopped by the Chip Theory Games booth at Origins, and I, I again got to touch it. Those neoprene pads and those custom dice look awesome. But I sat through, I was at an event where at Extra Life where a local group played through a game, and it took them way too long. So that one, I, I'm, I'm not as sure on. And then there's Besieged. Besieged, I know very little about. I know it was a big mini heavy. I think it's a cool mini or not game. But again, I have not played that one whatsoever. So that's this again, these three. Not based on personal experience, just what I've seen online. Next up, I have Forbidden Desert. Now, my kids dig this series of games, but for whatever reason, they just never sat well for me. I don't know why. Then is Aeon's End. Now, I dig Aeon's End. It's fun, and I absolutely love the fact it's a deck builder with a neat thing where you never shuffle your deck. You, When your cards go in your discard, you just flip that discard pile over so you can really set up your future turns. But that was about it. Like, that was neat, and I never really got all that into the rest of the game. The the cooperative aspects of it, the opening the portals just didn't do it for me. Moving up the list, I would go with mechs versus minions. Now, this is still fairly low on the list because we started it, and I never finished it. I love program movement games, and this is a cool one, but obviously it just didn't quite sync with our group as well as I'd hoped so. So next so that one I, I do recommend, but it's still kind of the middle of the list. Next for us would be Cthulhu Death May Die, a very different take on Mythos games, uh, much more two-fisted, dice-rolling fun than others you'll find in that uh, Cthulhu Mythos genre. Now, speaking of the Mythos genre, my next one would be Mansions of Madness. This is honestly one of the best app-driven games I've played. That is, it's a really well done Mythos game. Great cooperative game. Very atmospheric. Next up, though, what I enjoy even more is Mage Knight. I adore this game, though honestly, it can play better solo and can really bog down with more than two players. But this tops the others I've already mentioned. Then we have Gloomhaven, which would be my number one recommendation, except for Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Jaws is such a great way to enter the Gloomhaven world that we just can't recommend any groups not starting with that cheaper, smaller box. Uh, to onboard them to the game and, uh, you know, just to make sure it's to their taste so that they're not going to waste any money on the big, expensive game mm -hmm. that they may or may not enjoy. 
And from what we can tell, it is still true or perhaps mm -hmm. even more true with the upcoming release of Gloomhaven Second Ed. Go in on Jaws of the Lion now and learn before you buy that or Frosthaven or any of the other. Well, there you go, Amon. I hope that helps, but I also hope you stick around and listen to the full episode because now we're going to get into some cooperative games we've enjoyed, which includes games that weren't on your list. Now, unlike that last list, which was ranked, these games we're about to suggest are in no particular order. Now we're gonna, I'm going to start off with DC deck building card game. Now no. there are both cooperative, uh, com co competitive and uh, competitive versions to play of this game. But generally speaking, you are cooperating to defeat the forces of evil. Uh, and with such a wide range of cards, there's another version on Kickstarter right now, just after my big box delivered. Uh, you know, if you are a fan of DC at all, there is something in the DC deck building universe for you to enjoy uh, cooperatively. Now, next is the one overlip, uh, overlap, sorry, one overlap um, to what we just recommended to Amon. And that is Gloomhaven starting with Jaws of the Lion. I think Sean covered it well, so we're all good there. Start with Jaws, move on to the rest of the Gloomhaven games if you find yourself enjoying it. Next up, we have Horrified. Now, this is one we haven't talked about in a while, but <laughs> is still, if you enjoy that monster genre, the horror, the, the old monsters, uh, Monsters of Hollywood, a fantastic cooperative game with a really nice way to... Uh, vary the difficulty with the number of monsters present in the game. Now it isn't going to be one of the more difficult games on the list, but it is a fun, easy, relatively easy game for a wide range of ages. And again, difficulties with that monster, a number of monsters variability. And since that one came out, there is also the cryptid based horrified American monsters. If you're not interested in the old universal style. Pretty true. Uh, next, I have Codenames Duet, which I don't know how many times I'm going to preach this. I don't know if I'm actually preaching to the choir, if I've had any converts yet. But to me, it is the better version of Co Codenames. Despite the name Duet does not necessarily mean it is a two-player game, though I hate the fact they called it that because everyone assumes it is. This is a cooperative version of Codenames where you are working in teams trying to get the opposing team to guess the words you see while they're trying to get you to guess the words they see. And there's some overlap. It is, is by far, in my opinion, the better version of Cone Dames out there. Next up, we have Hanabi. This is an interesting one because it's just basically a card game. The big difference being your cards are being seen by everyone else and not you. Mm -hmm. Players have a limited uh, vocabulary of clues to give and no uh, uh, rules are you cannot talk about anything just following the very limited set of color or shape uh, or color or number uh, clues available to you to try and get everyone to lay out the cards in order. It's incredibly hard. It's incredibly fun. Uh, and if you like or, and, are, and are willing to play limited uh, communication games, this one should probably be on your list. Next, I have Chronicles of Crime. I probably recommend the entire series, but I specifically for this list put on 1400. Um, being a fantasy role play fan, I like the aspect of playing in uh, medieval times much more interesting to me than solving modern crimes. And sticking with the fantasy theme in this particular one, you as an investigator do get um, prophetic dreams as part of the experience. The most amazing part about Chronicles of Crime is it is an app-driven game that has some really cool immersion. If you want to talk to a specific um, a witness, you just scan a QR code on them. If you wish to combine an item with something or a place, you just scan the two QR codes. Added to that, there are even AR aspects where you get to a place and scan it and get to use your phone in AR and look around a crime scene. And that was just so immersive and cool. Uh, they even op offer like a full Oculus Rift like piece of cardboard thing that you can put on to, to improve it. I just stood there with my phone. So next recommendation for me is the Chronicles of Crime series. My personal favorite being 1400. Next up, I've got one that's new to us, but still mm -hmm. an enjoyable game, and that is Illiterati. 
Now, Literati is a word-based cooperative game where players are using letter tiles to uh, solve challenges given to them on cards. Uh, and there's a number of challenges that need to be done. But it, again, it is cooperative. So you can talk about the, the, the def different um, cards you have, what it is you're trying to solve. You can share letters freely between each other. Mm -hmm. And there is an overall goal to be reached, uh, not just everybody fighting for themselves a la Scrabble. Uh, mm -hmm. And so this one is great for people who, uh, families who have different levels of spe spelling ability. Uh, if you've got that one person in your family who is the, spe the Scrabble master and nobody ever wants to play uh, word games with them because they always win, Illumi uh, or Literati is a fantastic option because that person is now helping the entire team with their vocabulary, not competing against them. Once again, that is illiterati. Yeah, for, for those that don't know the game, think Bananagrams, where you can trade letters where you're trying to complete objectives like spell words with uh, animals and someone else is trying to spell synonyms. My next one is Legendary Encounters Alien, a deck building game, I think is the full title. Deck builders like to have long titles. Um, this is the follow-up to Marvel Legendary, which you will note is not on my list because technically it's not a cooperative game. The Legendary Encounter series took that and made it a full cooperative, and the Alien set does some amazing things to make you feel like you're playing through the first three Alien movies, um, including things like jump scares. There is a the way the, I can't remember the name of it, but basically the Alien deck, the Encounter deck, and how cards are revealed and move around on the board. You never know quite what to expect. And you actually get like the blips on the radar and everything has some great rules for cooperating where you can share symbols between players to give you that working together as a squad feel. Other legendary encounter games are just as popular um, with other people. Personally, I like the alien one best out of what I played. All right. That was legendary encounters alien. And next up is letter jam. This is another letter based cooperative game uh, that sort of takes uh, some, some aspects of literati, but also some aspects of Hanabi and puts yeah. them together into a uh, game where you can't see the letters in front of you. So uh, letters are passed out, words are made, uh, but, and then passed around to the next player who is displaying them outwards uh, away from them. Clues are given. You're, you're trying to get people to uh, guess the letters available and uh, it's a fun game. Again, you've got a lot of communication and a lot of fun uh, just trying to think up of how you can possibly make, make words out of the available letters. Uh, and uh, the scoring on this one is a little on the interesting side, but mm -hmm. uh, aside from that, it is a solid uh, cooperative word game. That was letter jam. Next is probably the easiest game on the list, and that is the game. The entire goal is you have a deck of cards that are one to one or secondly two to ninety nine, and you shuffle them, and you just have to play those cards in order. Sounds simple, but trust me, it is not. Uh, you're using four different piles of cards to play onto two going upwards from one to ninety nine hundred, the others going down from one hundred to one, and then the one hundred and the one are what's on the board. But you have to play two cards from your hand at a time. There's limited communication in this one. You are allowed to communicate, so it's not the mind, which you will note is not on our list. Um, you can talk to each other, but it's like, oh, are you going to go too far? Are you just going to go a bit? Oh, I'm going to make a big jump. Or, oh, don't play there, right? You're saying that kind of thing. This is a game when I first played it really didn't catch me. The more I play this, the more I enjoy it. This has become one of our favorite two-player games that Deanna just keeps in her purse. And whenever, you know, at a restaurant, a bar or a pub, we'll break out our copy of the game. Enjoy it just as much with more players. And that was the game. Well, next up, we have The Crew, which is actually two different games. Uh, that's The Crew, The Quest for Planet Nine, and The Crew, Mission Deep Sea. Now, these are both trick-taking games, but unlike a lot, they are cooperative trick-taking mm -hmm. games uh, where you are trying to hit specific trick-taking goals that are different for every round. I know the, the quest for planet nine has 50 different mm -hmm. goals to try and work through, uh, in a, in a progressive set. Um, and so it's a uh, mission based, essentially, uh, yep. mission, mission based, uh, cooperative, uh, card game. 
and that is The Crew, The Quest for Planet Nine, and Mission Deep Sea. Uh, next up, I have the Exit series. Um, I didn't pick a specific game here. Now, these are single play only games, which is the one downfall to them, but every single one we played, we've enjoyed. There are a number of different escape room in a box style series out there, but the one I think we have enjoyed the most is the Exit series from Cosmos. Um, if you're looking for your first experience with one of these, I recommend the Haunted Roller Coaster. If you're looking for something a little more complicated, there are other choices. We've reviewed a few of these over at tabletopbellhop.com, which you can head over there or check YouTube for our videos to see what we thought of specific ones. No, we don't spoil any. Now, what is fantastic about these is they work good for a group of, you know, anywhere from two to five players. Single player, you're going to have a hard time. You just, you need that multiple different people's way of thinking and way of looking at things to really enjoy these. And in particular, the Exit Game series is better than some of these other series by letting you divvy up tasks for different players. And that is the Exit series from Cosmos Games. Next up, we have Roll Camera from Grand Gamers Guild. This is a fun, cooperative dice placement game where you're trying to make a film based on uh, essentially a random selection of words given to you mm -hmm. by the game. Now, this one can be a little bit uh, quarterback -y, quarterback -y, mm -hmm. so it depends a lot on your group. But if you have a group that cooperates well and no one tends to overpower the group, Roll Camera is a super fun game with just staggering amounts of replayability, especially oh, yeah. if you add the B movie expansion, uh, mm -hmm. you're not going to see the same movie twice. Yeah, I strongly recommend that expansion. If you can find the bundle, I don't know if it's still available. So that one is distributed by Grand Gamers Guild, but actually published by Keen Bean Studios. And I think it's Keen Bean that now has copies of it. The next one is the most unique cooperative game on this list, and I mainly included it just because it's so different from everything else, and I was looking for a wide variety of types of cooperative games, and that is Rail Pass. This is a pick-up and deliver train game where you literally pick up and deliver trains by loading the trains with little wooden cubes and passing the trains to the players on your left and right, or possibly even passing them through a tunnel to the player across the table to you. The goal of the game is to get all of the colored cubes to the appropriate cities. Everyone gets a random mix of cubes in front of them and has to get the green cubes to the green city and the red cubes to the red city. But of course, trains can only hold so many and you can only hold one train in each hand and you're trying to pass them and load them and unload them while other players are going and it's real time and come on, we got to get those trains and I just need two reds before the time runs out. Of course, you drop a train and it crashes. You spill a cube and you've lost that cargo. Plus, there's a whole system for the conductors or the the what do you call engineers can only go won't go too far away from their home city. So you're having to swap engineers. There's just a ton of neat stuff going on. But I absolutely adore the fact this is a pick up and deliver game where you physically pick up and deliver components to other players. That just blows me away. And that was Rail Pass. Next up, we have one that may seem a little odd, but. Bear with me, folks. It's My Little Pony Adventures in Equestria deck building game. It's got a giant name, but you know what? It's got a giant bunch of content in it as well. Now, while it certainly helps if you are a fan or at least aware of My Little Pony and don't despise them, but the fact of the matter is this is not a kid's game. This is a solid deck building game with six different resources to track, a uh, variable difficulty scale. Uh, I think really the only complaint that we managed to find for this game was that some of the iconography and mm -hmm. text is a little small for our aging eyes. But if you don't have that problem uh, and you enjoy deck building, then this game is worth checking out. Unless, of course, you absolutely despise ponies. But you don't hate ponies, do you? <laughs> that was the My Little Pony deck building game, My Little Pony Adventures in Equestria. All right, the last one on the list, fans of the show have to have guessed was coming at some point, And that is the Adventuria Adventure Card Game from our friends at Ulysses Spiel. I don't know how much more we can, can proselytize this game. This is, in my experience, the, the best cooperative card game out there. 
um, played in the cooperative mode, not the dueling mode. Yes, eventually it can kind of be played like magic, but even the company that makes the game has realized that's a losing perspective. Can't wait for the new revised versions coming from Kickstarter that are going to make the RPG elements more involved. You're going to actually start getting branching paths and a better level up system. But even without that, we love Aventuria. And yes, it is in print at North America. We saw physical copies for sale at Origins. It is being distributed by Studio Publish Studio 2 Publishing. You can get this game. If you have difficulty finding it, just let me know. I'll send you a link on where you can actually get a copy of Aventuria. All right. Well, that is our list. But we still, as always, have some honorable mentions that deserve a little bit of recognition on our list. So first for me is Marvel champions. Cause I think this probably belongs on the list, but I haven't ever even played a non learning game. So when you get the game, it gives you preset decks and it tells you to play Spider-Man. And if you want to play two player, play captain Marvel, well, that's all we've done. So I can't really throw it on my play this awesome cooperative game. When all I've done is played the, the intro version. And I would love to play more Marvel Champions, but right now there is the pile of obligation that is is blocking the path. I have to fight through that pile before I feel justified in spending time deep diving Marvel Champions, plus a ton of expansion content. Now, they have not even come close to doing every Marvel hero, but there are tons of box sets out for this. So next up is uh, Scooby-Doo Escape from Haunted Mansion. Uh, the best available, currently available, Coded Chronicles game. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason this one ended up on our honorable mention list is it's really a one and done. But yeah. one of the nice things about this game, though, is even though it's done, you can pass it on to someone else and they yes. can still get the full experience. There is no destruction or tearing or writing of anything in this game. So while each game group is only really able to enjoy it once, multiple game groups can enjoy a single copy. Now, my final one is the Warhammer quest adventure card game, which is a game that might've eventually been cooler than Adventuria. For one, it wins for being Warhammer. And I am a huge Warhammer fanboy. I didn't have any experience with the dark eye before playing Adventuria. So I have no like nostalgia or fuel for the universe in Adventuria, but I love the Warhammer world. I love the fact that one of the characters is a, a Sigmarite um, champion of Sigmar, and then another one's a troll slayer, and you have your wood elf, and you have your fire mage, because that's your typical Warhammer party anymore nowadays. And this was a great game with some great cooperative rules and neat rules where you got to do th four different things, but one of your things was to refresh your cards and try and decide when to rest, and it was extremely well done. But it was just one base box, then Fantasy Flight lost the, less the license, and the game died on the vine, as far as I'm concerned. Because like most Fantasy Flight starter sets, you don't you kind of only give you a taste, and that's all we got with this. Now, I am fully aware that there is fan-created content out there, and congratulations, fans, on keeping this game going. But you can't even get the base game anymore because it's been so out of print. All right, well, there you have our recommendations for cooperative board games for when you all want to work together and play against the game instead of each other. Did we miss your favorite game? Comment to let us know about it, or better yet, join the Tabletop Bellhop Discord at discord.discord.tabletop uh, slash at discord.tabletopbellhop.com. Yeah. <laughs> that sure. was a mess. I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. So before we go on, I, I do want to call out some recommendations we are getting right now from our chat room here on Twitch. So these are some other people's favorite cooperative games that they would like. So the well, first one I saw was Spirit Island. Uh, Max Mercy Minions got men mentioned at the exact same moment you mentioned it on yes. this show. So Spirit Island was mentioned that you need to play multiple times to figure out the synergies between the gods. But that's not a bad thing. It's just a note that it's not a single use game. Yeah, Max Mercy Minions did come up. And then Red Meeple Ryan, longtime fan of the show, has, has a list for us here. So we have Defenders of the Realm, which I like to call Fantasy Pandemic. And we have Pandemic the Cure. Elder Sign, which is the Fantasy Flight dice-driven mythos game. The co-op mode for Conquest of Planet Earth. And then he has other co-op games with co-op modes, but he's yet to try them. 
All right. So thank you for the additional suggestions chat room. Do you have a question for us? As Amon did, hit us up with an email to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or head over to the blog and click on Ask the Bellhop. 